Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Hay Farm series. I'm your host, the Rattleman Buck. Currently, right now, we are doing some equipment shuffling. I am not even going to strap this down because all I'm doing is taking this skid steer over to my storage shed in the backyard of my house. We've had a couple of things change since the last time you guys have seen us on this series. I ended up selling off that Landall gooseneck in favor of a slightly smaller prowler. Then to replace it, we put back the Hallmaster trailer that we used to have, but I fixed the wheels on it so it doesn't sink into the ground. I am a little short on cash, so while we are uh, getting the cows fed, I'm also going to load up some possibly silage bales and go sell some of them. And then while I'm in town, I'll run the tractor supply and get myself some of that mineral feed. But come along for the ride with me as we head just north to the cattle barn and start getting the cows fed and taken care of. If you guys do like content like this and would love to see more of the hay farm, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. We are on the race to 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year. One task we are going to have to tackle on this hay farm is this wonderful gate system that I have. I believe I'm going to demolish some of this fence line in favor of backing up the gate, like probably 10 feet back into the opening, because trying to turn into this has always been a hassle. And that's also the reason why we got the prowler, so it's a little bit easier to navigate. That 30-foot trailer was just getting way too difficult to get around. The cows are definitely going to need just more than one wagon load of TMR, but until I can get that mineral feed, I don't really have the ability to make a full, correct TMR mixture. So that's why we're going to be selling off our bales to make room for some more money when we go down to the tractor supply and, of course, getting the supplies we need. Let's get these bales off and into the mixing wagon, and then it is off to tractor supply. Corey and Daryl have made their way over to the cattle barn, so that way they can get the water tanks filled. They are also running some numbers to get the feed prices pr priced out for the month. And then eventually they're going to be taking the Sooner trailer that's on the opposite side of the yard and moving the cattle over to start getting their hoof trims. We do like to do that monthly to ensure that they have proper balance on their claws. These six silage bales, though, should at least get us a bit of money. These are probably the most valuable bales that I have, and that'll help offset the cost that it's going to take to get those mineral feed pallets. Give her a quick shake, because that's not going anywhere. We are on the road. My only real complaint about this Ford is that for some odd reason, whenever it is towing a gooseneck trailer that can strap something down, the rear end becomes very, very light, like there's no weight on it at all, and then it just swings out to the side. I don't want to have to sell a truck that I just bought, but there's a good chance that we might have to if these problems continue to pursue. Might have to go and look for like a 2017 or something. Moment of truth, though, how much of these bales going to get me? Six bales got me $7,700. That's good and garbage at the same time. Now that we got a little bit of money to play with, though, let's head over to Tractor Supply, get ourselves, I think, two pallets of mineral feed, and we will go from there, because I know those pallets usually last me a little bit longer than I think. $3,000 out the door. We got two pallets we need to load up. Should just be these yellow ones. See if I can just knock out two birds with one stone and get two pallets while I'm already here. That will work. Finishing up what I was talking about the truck, though, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do because I still have a loan out on this truck, and I'd rather not really pass that over. But some of the problems that I've already had with this truck, I just don't know if it's worth the price of keeping it. So I'll be looking around at some listings and seeing whether or not I might be able to get this truck off. Because it's a 450 diesel 4x4, I'm going to be able to obviously get my money back for it. But it's a matter of what I'm going to get and see if I can just get something that might be closer to a wash. Now that we have a fully correct mixed wagon of mixed rations, let's get these moo-moos fed. And I'm trying to stay out of Corey's way because he's got the cattle trailer hooked up to his truck right now since they're going to start shifting over some of these cows to get their uh, hoofs trimmed off. But look at all them moo-moos. They are ready to eat. Oh boy, they see it. Oh, they're seeing that the food truck's here. Come and get it. It's not going to get any more raw, you know. I would presume that if we made one more full batch, we should pretty much be sitting at about 95%. 
but we will need to run into town and get some sand for the beds. I accidentally skipped ahead far enough that I forgot I had this thing on days now. So the cows are just like, yeah, where's my food at? Meaning that I'm kind of mistreating my cattle accidentally. But fear not, the situation is under control. I'm thinking that the ratios, it's like three quarters of a silage bale and three quarters of a hay bale plus a quarter of a straw bale and then the mineral feed, that's like, that's the balance. But we're just gonna move a couple of these mineral feed bags over and we'll just start hand feeding them in. It seems to be a bit hay heavy on this one, but that's all right, we'll be able to make it work. Taking care of the cows is obviously very important, but it is very time consuming. All I have to do really after this is start cutting hay and cutting grass, and that part's easy. Only problem is that I never really prepped the swather at all. We haven't greased it yet. We haven't checked the fuel gauge on it. We haven't seen if it's even started, if it's got a dead battery. You know, all the things you're like supposed to actually do when farming. We'll power off the wagon, and I'm not 100% sure what step I'm gonna do next. I might just kind of clean up the area quick, but we will catch you guys back once we are ready to go for our next segment. But the cow's now fed and watered, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig out the D21 since I believe this is actually my fastest of these tractors. And we're gonna go grab that gravity wagon that's sitting up by the cattle barn and go get ourselves some sand. To my second favorite tractor of all time, let's let her rip. Purrs like a kitten. Let's get this show on the road. Could I in reality pull this with my pickup truck? Yes. But when that wagon's fully loaded with sand, that's a lot of weight behind a vehicle. So I think I'm just gonna take the safe road out and use a tractor and gets the same job done. Luckily, we did hook up a set of flashers to this tractor, so we're gonna kick those lights on quick. And to show you guys the Hallmaster, this is our new hay trailer. I just kind of finally got over to it. I fixed the tires on it from the previous version, so it shouldn't get stuck in the ground like it used to when I pulled it behind the older 65 Chevy. We got sand to haul though, so I'll see you guys back down to tractor supply and we're gonna pick up a whole load of sand and then we can dump it off in the cattle barn and we are set to go for the day. On the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. If you guys wanna find out what wheel I use joke, check out moza.com. This truck simulator steering wheel is one of the best wheels on the market. On a more serious note, if you guys didn't know, I actually have been working with Moza Racing on testing out their truck simulator steering wheel. It's a very high quality sim wheel. And if you guys are getting serious about your sim gameplay experience, I highly recommend checking it out. While definitely not cheap, it is definitely one of the most well-built wheels I have ever used. So if that interests you guys, be sure to check out Moza's links down in the description down below. Other than that, let's fill this bad boy up with sand and hopefully this will not cost me an arm and a leg. Oh dear, this better fill up the entirety of that cattle barn. $2,200, that's not pretty. Hopefully this is just one and done trip, but we got a car coming, so let's boogie. Ooh, we might need to make another trip at some point, but we're not gonna do it today. It's not the end of the world, but I really don't want to go drop another $2,000 right now to go and get that. So let's get that conditioner on the swather, grease it up, get ready to head out. It's going to be a heck of a lot warmer this week, and I'm just going to use the Alice to pretty much go haul that sand again. So we'll just park this behind the shed, just like so. Such a good tractor. But it's you that I need to have a word with. Let's see, do you have power to start, or are we going to need to jump you? We're going to need to get the jump box, because that is deader than a doornail. Let's just get you hooked up. And while that's charging, I'm gonna turn on the lights and go get the Oliver. Now brace yourself guys, because this Oliver, in my opinion, is the absolute best sounding tractor in the entire game. Like literally the best sounding tractor the entire game. You just cannot beat that sound. This has probably always been my least fuel efficient tractor. Now that that's topped off, let's run up and get the rake with this tractor since that's what this thing's always known for hauling. And if we can fit it, it's in a pallet box. I might just put the conditioner on top of the rake and then just carry it back on that so we can install it in the Heston because that thing's gonna need to charge up on the battery a little bit. I don't have the jump jump box yet. I have to still go get one since mine's broken. 
But Daryl should be able to join us here in just a little bit. He's finishing up on some of the paperwork in the office, and I think Corey's still working on the hoof trimming. See the condition? Yep, it's in that box right back there. So let's grab this Frontier, which that had a completely different frame system than I thought it did. We might not actually be able to haul this thing back. We just have to get this box all the way over. Oh, that's heavy. That'll work. I'll just drive slow. Voltage looks good. Our cranking app seemed to be at normal levels or at least close to it. I just dragged the, the conditioner in. I'm not about to mess with that. But, okay, do we have power? Oh, yeah. Fire's like a top. Might have to turn this around. There it is. With that conditioner now installed, we will be able to just drop straight. Hey, I'm going to run this thing over to the other shop quick and get the grease points hit on this since that is the one thing I did not do beforehand. Probably wouldn't hurt to do it to the Frontier Rake as well. But then we are off to our north side hay ground and we will start chopping away at that grass and getting ourselves some new bales. Let's get you. Let's get our casters. Other side. Get the zerts on the mower. And our linkages. Perfect. That Heston is all nice and greased up. Now on to the rake, which will take like five years because, you know, it's got all those wheels. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Yep, that makes that official. We are buying a, like, DeWalt or Milwaukee one of those self-greasers because my hands... I can't feel them. The clamp is just, uh. With everything squared away though, let's pop up in the cab, make our way over to our first set of hay ground. I think Daryl just said that he is now done with all of the cattle work for the morning. So he is gonna run back, grab the Oliver and bring that out to the field for me. Corey also finished up on all of the hoof trimming and there was no problemos with the cattle. So that is good. I don't know exactly how Daryl's going to get back. Oh, okay. I think he's just going to cut across the grass. Yep, he's just going to cut across the yard. So he'll go grab the Oliver, which is sitting in that shed on the door. And we will get to cutting grass. So I'll pop up in the drone and catch some of those sweet, sweet looking drone shots. It's over. We are screwed. Daryl's finally out here with the rake and Corey is kind of back and forth with me right now. He's gonna go fly the drone a little bit for Daryl because I'm gonna start cutting on this backfield, but I didn't know that uh, Corey actually had a 2016 Platinum. That's pretty nice. I didn't think I paid him that much because usually I'm firing him every third week. I've been talking to my agronomist and I've been looking at the yieldage for this field. My monitors are showing that we're pulling a little bit less than we did last time. Somewhere probably in about that 75 to 95% range compared to like the 125 that we were pulling last time. So we're gonna see if we need to do any lime work, if we need to do any fertilizer work, really just anything for application wise. We don't have any weed problems with this grass. But we obviously want to get as many bales as possible since I'm only going to keep about three quarters of these bales and then the remainder of them is all going to be sold off for profit. Bambi is in the tree line. I repeat, Bambi is in the tree line. Come here, you. Once I'm done with this headland, I am going to go start going back and forth on the passes. So let's transfer you guys back over to Daryl and Corey and get some sweet footage of that raking process with that beautiful Oliver. how rough this field was it's just, it's just bum, 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 bum 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 we are getting ready to finish it out though so i'm gonna turn myself around for one last final time and i always forget that i can't turn all the way sharp because of that field to slip when destroy or basically if i turn too sharp it destroys my field and my crop so yeah that's great our yield didn't look too bad it's a bit more patchy this year 
The only thing I need to make sure I do when I get done with this mowing is I need to clean out the deck because if you don't keep this stuff clean, that grass is going to build up underneath the deck and it'll start rusting through. So good thing I actually have the world's greatest farm soap on hand in the shop, some Andy Clean. Between that and what we would usually use as a putty knife, it's, I call it a grass. My dad and I use one of them as a grass scraper. I'll just clean out the inside of the deck, make sure we spray it off with some Andy Clean, and that'll help keep our maintenance costs down. All I got left is this tiny little triangle and then we'll send the boys in and have this thing nice and raked up. I also realized that I haven't gotten the baler prepped yet. I'm going to need to make sure we get the bale twine added in, but that'll probably be a task for another day. We're going to have to let this stuff obviously dry out for the next couple days. It's supposed to be like 75, almost 80 this week, so I'm really going to let this hay just dry itself down and hopefully we can get it baled before it's supposed to rain. We all know the saying, hay's down, it's going to rain. It's just a matter of when. With that field now finished though, we'll give the boys the ring. Hey, you guys wanna head up there and start wind rowing, you can. I'm gonna head back to the farm. You should just take Corey's truck. Probably would perform better than mine anyway. I think his is deleted and tuned, if I'm correct. I'll have some work cut out for me. I think the white tractor is probably gonna be the one that we put on the baler since it's the biggest tractor I own and that Vermeer baler is pretty dang heavy. Once we're done with the D21 though, I'm probably gonna hook that up to the Rhino flex wing and get some ditches mowed. So that way we can keep this place looking nice and clean. We obviously want to make sure we finish up that sand lot with the cattle so they are having some nice, clean, and comfortable beds. If we need to, we'll shift over some of these cows over to our other cattle ho housing. Since it's getting nice out, we don't really need them to be inside all the time. But if it does get really hot, then we'll probably move a couple of them back over to this one since it's air conditioned as well. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for checking out the Hay Series. Be sure to smash that like button, and if you guys haven't already, consider subscribing down below. That should really do it for me, though. We don't really have a whole lot more else to do today, so we'll catch you on the next one. This is the Rental Man Out. Peace. Hold on, did this dude literally just park in my yard? I cannot believe it. This dude literally just parked in my yard. Daryl, that's a strike.